Hello, Bunker fans, Bunker owners, preppers, doomsdayers, Rising S Company right here, Clyde Scott. Kind of show you around the shop today what we're doing here. February 9th. Kind of see here, got a full house, a good thing. I'm going to show you a different video, but I'm going to give you a peek here. One of our generator pods. That's what that is right there is a generator pod. And we'll go look at it and see all the inlet pipes and stuff there. What we're going to talk about, I keep getting a lot of people asking me about why we do our cabinetry like we do. Why we do steel instead of wood or particle board. It's not really even wood anymore. You see here, that's the back side of them. And there's the inside of the kitchen. So what it is, we do it all out of steel for a reason. Not because it's easy. It's a lot harder, more expensive to do it out of steel. Look at the little wine rack. I love it. That's greatness. So, I'll let you look at them here, how we do them. They're solid steel. And you can see we got steel shelves in them. Here are the hinges here. And they're all in with metal screws. And these are all pop riveted. So, why this is important to do everything out of steel is this. This is a subterranean structure, okay? So, anytime you do something underground, you got a chance for moisture, or hydraulic pressure from water. And keep in mind, if you look here at our welding, that's continuous weld. What this is, is a flange, kind of like a double wide mobile home. You can see this unit here slides together to this unit and they go together. You can see the doors there, they'll close and set up on a flange there. So we mock all that up there and get it exactly the right measurements. But let's get back to the cabinets. It's so important. I don't want to tell all of our little secrets because a lot of people try to copy us and do things. And that's okay. If you are if you want to build yourself and you're actually going to be somebody that wants to build their own shelter, I'm fine with that and I encourage it. You can call us for free advice. If you are actually building your own uh, shelter uh, to prepare for things that are going on in this crazy world that we have today. Uh, and I'm not just talking about the current administration, I'm talking about all administrations. Um, I don't know there's a good one left. So we as the American people, we, we the people, are going to have to stand up against tyranny. And that's, that's another video that's coming. We're, we'll start making a lot of videos. Um, now, if you'll notice, you'll see here the quarter inch thick tubing that goes up. So these metal cabinets and the way that tube is, the way why we end it there, for one, you got a walkway through here, but that is actually structure. That, that structure right there, that tube actually helps the roof. You know, it gives it more strength, even though we have a uh, rectangular tubing on top and, and, and three uh, and a half pounds per foot channel, um, it, it helps. So. That's why we do all of our walls out of steel, all of our door frame openings, is for the structure. Now the cabinetry is so you never would have a, if they ever got moisture in there, you'd never have a molding problem, ever. You will never have to worry about fire, you're not gonna burn metal. Um, but there's a lot of things we do that is a, a really nice feature. I want you just to look, all of the nipples and the water pipes and stuff coming in, it's all threaded to hook all your lines up. And they come in from outside and then they're welded solid. And then you look here, they ask about our pantries. Well, here's why we do them out of metal. Just take a look. Now the solid metal that we break in our shear, we got big shears and punches and breaks. And so we build this pantry. We build all the shelves in it. There's nothing we buy. We build everything here at Rising Gas. We build our own vault doors all of our interior doors. So this shelter here is gonna to connect to this one like I was saying. So I'm standing in the kitchen right now as you can see the kitchen behind me. See the little flat top burning stove, pretty neat feature. So then what we're gonna do is standing in the kitchen, when this slides up here, this pantry is gonna be right off the kitchen. Now, this is how we like to do food storage. You see the breaker panel there? 
all the steel pots coming in. Now, we don't like to do storage in areas that's hard to get to. It's just best uh, like that right there, just to kind of build a pod off of the main shelter and then you can um, uh, have your storage in an easy to get to location. And you can, you can and some people we've had put a door on so they can lock it. Cause you never know who all is gonna be in your shelter. You might have kin folks that's, or friends, but how much do you trust them in a doomsday situation? You gotta start thinking about that, you know? How much do you really trust them? And I don't know that answer. Uh, I don't know that you know that answer, but sometimes people put a door right here. I've done it multiple times and they lock it with a combination lock or a key lock. So if you'll, I'm gonna show you in the bathroom here. This one's in construction, final phase of being completed. And you see, we do all everything out of conduit. All the, all the wiring is hid in metal conduit. But you can see even in the bathroom, we build all these doors as well. But the reason we do this, like I said, you don't want mold if you got moisture, you don't want them falling apart. You don't want a fire hazard. It's a lot harder to build it out of steel, but it's just the best way to do it. You see the bunk beds? This is what we call a double wide. So if you look on our website and there's a double wide shelter on there, this is what it's gonna be like. So you can see here, kind of like a double wide, like a double wide mobile home. If you look at the end down there, that down there is going to be a, a bedroom, I mean, a big living room goes on the end of this one here. That big living room is on the end. The reason that's hanging out in the air like that is because they wanted a free-spanning, opened-up living room. So there'll be big I-beams on top of that. And then we encase this thing with concrete around it. And then the master bedroom is where I'm at now. We got the blast valve there, a rising S blast valve that have been tested. Engineer put them together, really nice product. Got a big old brass valve there that we paint black just for cosmetics, but that valve is also brass. Everything inside of the blast valve is stainless, so you don't have to worry about any kind of moisture or rusting or anything in a vent pipe. And this one here has got an escape. I'm not gonna show that just because of the customer. Uh, all of our doors you see are greasable hinges with a bronze bushing. So you never gotta worry about it. it, it you know, every time the rust or seize up, it's 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 grease. It's like a gate hinge out in a, a cow pasture that's been there for 50 years and still opens and closes because it's got grease. Grease doesn't go away, it doesn't evaporate. So this is this is what I would consider more of an upgraded style shelter. I'm gonna walk out of, away from it here, kind of show you how we open them up. You can see how that flange. One's gonna slide up to there. And these two are gonna slide together. And then the one's gonna slide here. So it's gonna be one unit here. Then that's gonna become one unit. And I'll show you. Hope you can hear me. It's pretty loud in the shop today. It's that. So these, all these shelters are gonna hook together. So we bring them out in pods. And then we got like four boats on them. Then we weld them solid in the field. And then we got a coating that we've had made. Um, so everything you see is not paint. It's a special epoxy made for ships that go in the ship holes on the outside and the inside for the US military. That's the product we use with a couple of different additives because it had to be somewhat different. And here's that generator pond. As you see, them are all steel nipples. We've got plastic caps on them. But the generator is gonna be here. And up there is where you drop in the generator down into the hole. And this is what we call a side entrance uh, door opening. So that's a staircase. I'm sorry, it'd be a side entry staircase. And you look here, you see it. So, we got a shop full. Right here is where we're building doors. 
Can't show you the inside of the door, it's proprietary. But you can see how thick the door is. Solid steel door built right here at Rising S. We like to build everything in house and not outsource it. For the simple fact is we want to make sure that we can control anything that might go wrong at any time. I, I really do like this shelter that I showed you the cabinets. Just keep in mind, you don't want cabinets that are rot, made out of particle board. You don't want cabinets that ain't made in the United States of America. Key point. And you wanna be able to control the quality. So, that's how you control quality right there. You build them yourself in your factory. You'll see over there, that's our machine shop side. Bunch going on over there, some CNC equipment. Um, so we're, we got some stuff that we're gonna be building. It's gonna be pretty neat for y'all to be able to um, to look at pretty soon. And we got a contest coming up that y'all are really gonna be excited about. So make sure to subscribe on this video. And let's start with the YouTube. And let's look, before we do that, let me kind of show you how the doors here work. It's called what we call a receiver groove. I've got this from a 1950s model bank. Not all my idea, only some of it. You see the bearings here. Stainless bearings that are sealed with stainless bolts. This is a receiver groove. Welded solid, quarter inch plate. This is a chemical airtight seal right here. And here's the handle. See, that's your lock. And then we got this flange here, so there's no way to get into this lock and cut it. Real simple, it's just two buttons, one button, two buttons or one button, whatever. There's 15,000 different combinations can go in there. If you look here, this is real simple to lock it. This is real simple. We got a panel here to access the lock. And we also have a way that there's no way to be locked in it. We have an override on this door from the inside of the door. We can pull a lever and it'll automatically guarantee to unlock no matter what happens. So that's pretty crucial. Now, Nobody wants to be locked in anything. I don't care if it's your house or that you live in now or an underground bunker. So, and also look, let's talk about our walls, all, all of our steel walls. Very important to have steel walls because that's your structure. Because remember, if you're free spanning this and you're under the earth and you got a bunch of concrete on it, a house on it, whatever, it's important that you have these walls, solid steel walls, solid steel tubing. This gives you layers and layers of protection. You see the lock there. So if you were in there, see the door shut nice and clean with a seal, no bang, no nothing. Now, if I got that lock, this is a layer of protection. If somebody got in the door and I was in here, I could lock this, go to another room, go to my escape hatch. So it's just layer after layer after layer. Not only it's strong, for the structure, think about the layers of protection because you can't have one layer, you need multiple layers. So if you do have to, to get away, like say that the thread is too much, it's overcoming, right? You're too many of them, just you and your family. Well, you need a way out and you need to have multiple layers, multiple layers. So that's why we do that. And if you see here, conduit, the boxes, kind of like home. All LED lights. We have a dual feature. You can hook up high power voltage or low voltage or both. So there's some pretty neat features that we have here with uh, Rising S that nobody else in the world offers because we created, invented it, and we have patented it. And we have patents pending. Um, so you can see we use an overhead crane. We don't like 
bend them things with forklifts. So it's important to have an overhead crane because you don't want to warp your, your floors or your ceilings. Okay, that's gonna be enough for today. Remember, I got a surprise coming soon on a contest and it's a, it's a big deal to be televised and you're gonna wanna be a part of it. Some people are gonna wanna enter and join. I'll give you a, I'll give you a hint. It is living in a bunker in a contest for 30 days in, in the in the in the contestant that wins wins a significant amount of cash. So we're gonna leave it at that. And uh, by the way, hit the button on the bottom like this. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, call. There's always questions. You know, why do you do these kind of cameras? Why don't you put a wood floor in them? Well, again, I don't want wood. It's something that's under the earth that is guaranteed to have a little bit of moisture in it at some point. Um, you just don't want that. It doesn't hurt it. When I say moisture, you can't tell it, see it, feel it, but it's there. And I don't want wood products to create any kind of sicknesses because they can hold a sickness. If you brought in a sick person, it can hold a sickness. Um, it can grow sicknesses with mold. And if you ever did have a problem, you can't fix it. You take it all out and start over. But still, it's no different than a ship. You can fill one of them up with water if you wanted to, drain it out, go in and repaint it, and it's just brand new again. So that's kind of an important deal there. Oh. Also, let me show you this before we go. This is our paint booth. See the big filter wall back in the back? This is a tunnel. Someone wanted a crawl space tunnel instead of a hallway. That's the difference when we say tunnel or hallway. So, hope you liked it all. Subscribe to the channel. More to come. Thank y'all.